Welcome to Delta BC, a historic fishing and farming community nestled among the south banks of the Fraser River. Today, it's all quiet on the waterfront, but this town is facing the greatest threat in its history. The BC Ministry of Transportation's plan for a major highway that would indelibly change this pastoral landscape. Concerns are mounting over the South Fraser Perimeter Road, a key component of the ministry's $3 billion highway mega plan, the BC Gateway Project. Scientists, politicians, and longtime residents fear the SFPR will have overwhelmingly adverse impacts on their local community and environment, including Burns Bog, a critical protected ecosystem. Families who pioneered this sleepy rural town generations ago stand to be uprooted to make room for the highway, which is intended to facilitate increased truck traffic from nearby Delta Port, also slated for a major expansion. In all, 200 homes in North Delta and Surrey are to be expropriated thanks to the SFPR. Local resident Don Hunt is spreading the word throughout Delta's neighborhoods, raising awareness for a project that to this point has been shrouded in secrecy. These families have lived along these bluffs for generations and they're going to have to move away. The Johnson family, Johnson Wind, uh, is named after them. They've already moved, the whole family's moved off to Langley. So Delta's losing its pioneer families. It's losing its heritage. The, the, the community is losing the concept of the heritage by dis disassociating it from where it started. Dawn introduced me to Hazel Norm who's lived in the same home overlooking the river since 1937. It's not hard to find signs of her deep roots in the community. Current plans have the SFPR missing her property line by a matter of feet, leaving her with zero compensation for the four-lane highway that will overshadow her backyard. Sadly, Hazel will be left alone, as her family next door loses its home. She told us of a frustrating lack of clarity on the planned route and how it will affect they, her. They claim they'll come up pretty close to his patio, and the same with my sister-in-law. We don't really know. They haven't told us. It's all hearsay. I wish we knew what we were doing. They don't come and they don't uh, offer you anything or tell you anything. You don't know from day to day what you're doing. We next visited 93-year-old Sig Iverson, who moved to Delta in 1926 and will be forced from her home of 59 years if the SFPR goes through. Sig echoed Hazel's confusion over the plans. Yeah, my son lives next door. My niece lives there. <laughs> and my daughter lives down the road here a little ways. We used to go to the meeting that we would like to know definitely what was going on whether we would have to sell and move out tomorrow or what, but don't know anything for sure. So just wait, wait, and see what happens. But like I said, I'm going to stick around as long as I can. <laughs> the, the whole family still lives where they've lived for generations. And where are they going to find suitable and comparable property with the view of the river, a view of the mountains, looking over their business assets, and uh, they're going to be removed from it and families divided. These elderly residents are far from alone in their concerns over the SFPR. A recent Stop Gateway rally at the East Delta Community Hall drew some 800 concerned residents from throughout the Lower Mainland. They reacted passionately to a diverse list of speakers, including local Conservative MP John Cummings. If all of our neighbours really understood what was in store for them if these projects go ahead. BC Place Stadium wouldn't be big enough for us all. I spoke to John later near an old Delta farm that's slated to become a rail marshalling yard to accommodate more containers from the port. This whole area that you see behind me now, uh, 25 years from now, is going to be a uh, chock-a-block with, with containers uh, and warehousing and industrial development. There'll be nothing left of this farmland. You have to ask yourself just what is the real legacy here? From a technological point of view, these guys are, are, are you know, are stuck in the past uh, or, or not really looking at reality. I, I'm, I'm appalled at, uh, at the level of thinking. I think what we have to do is, is stop, uh, catch our breath, take a look at what's going on around the world and use the best of technologies and, and the best of experience elsewhere to make this, this transportation corridor something that uh, we'll all be proud of and something that won't be destroying our communities. 
Clearly, the SFPR poses numerous distinct threats to Delta, to the environment, farmland, residents' safety, health, and their very way of life. Most people came to North Delta because it's so livable. We like to be on the river, we like to have all the wildlife and the ravines, we like the occasional deer wandering up into our properties, and all that's going to be taken away. They're going to take, remove most of the green space along the bluffs, and all the, all the major trees along here are used by the bald eagles. For those who have begun to grasp the reality of the South Fraser Perimeter Road, despite the ministry's preference for obscurity, there's a range of emotional responses. The toughest one to observe is that of resignation. I can't see how they can build it, but they can do anything if they want to. Their attitude that they can just pretty much do as they please? Yeah, it is their attitude. It is my attitude because uh, you don't own your place, you, you don't own anything. They just come and take it. They had roads named after them when they came here a lifetime ago. But today, it's a new road, promising to cut a swath through their backyards and the community they helped build that may finally force them to leave. It's hard to imagine Delta without them almost as hard as imagining them without Delta.